Water damage is probably one of the worst things that can happen to your home, but it doesn't have to come at the onset of something like Superstorm Standy. It could be something as simple as a leaky faucet or a pipe in your basement over the course of a long period of time that just adds up that you never noticed. That is where a leak detector comes in handy. However, what if you're not home? Well, then you're not gonna hear your leak detector going off. That's where something like the Xsense Smart Water Leak Sensor comes in handy. Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Xsense Smart Water Leak Sensor with Base Station SW. S44, that is the model that gets you the base station and three leak sensors. I will start this review off by saying that Xsense did reach out to me and provide me this system for the purposes of doing an unbiased review, and that's what you're going to get. The big thing separating this system from a regular leak detector is, if we push our box over to the side, you get not only a leak detector, but you get the base station. The base station is going to act as your gateway to receive notifications from your smart leak sensors wherever you happen to have them placed. But because these two talk to each other and then can notify you remotely, that means that there is a setup process for this system. However, I will state the setup process for this is ridiculously simple. In fact, so simple, I made it harder for myself thinking it was more difficult than it was. Let's take a look at that right now. This will be setup process for the Xsense Smart Water Leak Detector 3-pack with Base Station. First things first, you are going to need an Xsense account so that you can utilize the Xsense app. So I already have my account set up and we want to add our devices. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the plus sign in the upper right hand corner and then we're gonna select what it is we want to add. So in our case, we want to first add a Base Station because if we select water sensor, we have to add the base station first. So if you don't know you have to add the base station, you can click on the water sensor and it'll say add the base station, or I will come in and say add the base station. We are doing the SBS50, because that's the one that looks like this, as opposed to the more tall looking one. So we're gonna hit that, and then it's gonna say, hey, it wants access to utilize our camera, so we're going to do only this time. And then there's a QR code on the bottom that we are gonna scan, so we're gonna do that off camera really quickly. And once you do that, you're given this information. So name, location, so home, or select a uh, room. So in this case, I'm going to create a room and we're just going to say that this is going to live in my living room. Uh, we have to create a home. So this is just going to be called home because well, I only have one. It's asking for the location. So in my case, it's the United States. And then uh, select room as needed. Uh, so we're going to say living room and create. And there we go, we have now successfully created the name and location. We're gonna select next. Now we have to turn on the base station, which, which means we have to take and plug in our base station. So for the purposes of this, I'm quickly gonna plug that in off camera and then power on the base station right here. So we'll give that a moment. You see it's flashing different colors right there. So once we're flashing this yellow color, you're going to press and hold that button on the back of it right there for five seconds. And just to confirm, all right, so it says yes, confirming that it's blinking yellow after pressing. We're gonna select next, and I'm going to say only this time so it figures out my location. Ah, so make sure your Bluetooth is on because this is going to search for the device using Bluetooth, all right? And since I'm already on my IoT network, I'm gonna quickly put in the password and then obfuscate that from view and select next. And once you do that, it uh, kind of pops up and says, make sure that it's right, and then shows you in plain text the actual uh, password name. I kind of wish it didn't do that, but yes, I'm gonna confirm that that is correct. Connecting to Wi-Fi. Very loud, uh, letting me know it's connecting to Wi-Fi, so it's- Wi-Fi connected. That was really quick. So it says it's connected to Wi-Fi, even though the counter says there's still about 53 seconds. Uh, so it is connecting device. We see blue right there, so the blue should be good. And there we go, all finished. So we're gonna say finished. All right, so we can silence an alarm by pressing the base station. So we can have the ability to turn off the ability to silence an alarm. We're gonna leave that on and select save. All right, and from here, you can connect other devices, which we kind of need to. Uh, so notice we can connect smoke detectors, carbon monoxide, and water sensors. So this base station is not just for these water sensors, but for any Xsense smart device that you might already have. So. I'm gonna do one water sensor from here. 
So it's gonna call water leak sensor and we're gonna call this, so I'm calling it water sensor, blah, 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 hot water. And we're gonna create a room and we're gonna say this is in the basement and select next. Now we have to take one of these. We quickly press the button twice on the bottom to start getting a flashing blue. So don't press and hold, quickly press. So tap, tap. There we go, it's blue. Gonna select next. Ready to add a device. Device added. And just like that, that was really quick. Okay, so go to set up an installation and it's kind of showing you best places to put this. We're gonna select next. So kind of showing you again. We're gonna say that's installation finished. So that's doing one of these via the home base. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select finish. So now that's everything it's showing you. Hey, that's online. Now we're gonna do one of these just through the application itself without doing the base station first. So I'm gonna press add a device, water sensor. So we're gonna call this water sensor washer. And where is this located? This is in the basement. We're gonna select next. And again, we're gonna do that tap tap. There we go, blinking blue, select next. Ready to add a device, device added. Just like that. So when you actually do it correctly, and that's gonna walk you through the setup process again. So when you do it correctly, it is remarkably quick. And finish installation, and you can see right here, it's showing us everything is good to go. So again, if you do it correctly, the setup process for this is ridiculously simple, which is great. Before we start talking about our actual peripherals, I'm gonna quickly talk about the other thing that you get in the box with this. And realistically, you get a wall wart power adapter and a USB to micro USB cable that is three feet long. This plugs into our base station. Our base station here is the brains of the operations. This is how your leak detectors can communicate with you when you are not home. The base station itself has a little X on the front there. That is a LED light, which will help you through the setup process as well as letting you know, hey, is this on, is it off, what's going on? Flipping it over, we have four rubber feeties on the bottom that help raise this off the surface that we have it on. And we have a speaker right here. Now, the speaker has an alarm volume of 100 decibels because not only will your leak detector notify you, the base station will make a loud noise letting you know, hey, there's a problem as well. Coming to the back of our device, this is where our micro USB cable goes into and then a silence button. So if you're not by your phone or the leak sensor, you can tap this and silence those alarms. With anything that plugs into electricity, my thought is always, well, how much power does something like this use? It is very useful having a base station, but if it's sucking down power, it kind of reduces its usefulness for me. I'm happy to report that this uses negligible amounts of power, meaning that the device that I actually use to read electrical usage didn't read anything from this. Also, it does not get warmed when plugged in. Some devices do. This one does not. It's really good. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed on the back of that, or lack of, is there is no ethernet cable. This device is purely Wi-Fi. That means 2.4 gigahertz, not five gigahertz, sadly. So you get longer ranges with this, but it also means that you can put this anywhere in your home to help it communicate better with those hockey puck water sensors. The transmission range, meaning how far it can be away from your Wi-Fi access point, is 164 feet. That gives you a lot of versatility, considering you can plug this in centrally, but it doesn't have to be next to your Wi-Fi router like some other hubs that you might have seen. But this is only part of the system. Let's take a look at the leak sensor itself. The leak sensor has a remarkably small footprint at only 3.1 by 3.1 by 1.4 inches. On the top here, you have a hole that is actually the speaker. That's where you're gonna get sound out of, letting you know, hey, there's leak detected. There is this ring kind of cut out, and then right there, uh, let's see if I can get that to focus, right there, which is not focusing well, but those are two metal contacts. Those are actually contacts for water. And the reason I like this channel around the top is if you happen to put this under a leaky faucet, this channel will help direct water to these probes so you'll get notified that there is an issue sooner rather than waiting for the leak to get out of hand and get to the bottom where we have four extra probes and then a test slash silence button underneath. You'll also notice underneath here we have three small screwdriver holes. That is because this comes pre-installed with two AAA batteries and they are replaceable. The stated lifespan for that is three years of use. The stated life of the actual water sensor is five years. So realistically, you only have to change the batteries 
once in this, but they make it ridiculously simple just by having those screws there and then a little line there so you know how to line things back up. Coming to the bottom here, again, you're gonna notice it has slight raises and these are not rubberized in any way, shape or form. They're just kind of plastic molded. And if we look at our contacts, you'll notice that they kind of sit just a little higher than these touch points here. And that actually is a good thing. And I say that from experience because I did have another water sensor that I had in the past and its contacts were right flush on the floor. Meaning if I had this, on the floor next to my hot water heater, which is concrete, those contacts would touch the concrete and depending on the temperature outside, inside, and the heating uh, could detect moisture coming from the concrete itself. I do not have a problem like that with the contacts being pushed up slightly and not directly touching the floor. If any water starts getting here, yes, it might take a little more before this would go off, but the sensitivity of this is as such that it does not take that much before it goes off. The operational range of the three pack that you get is 1600 square feet per sensor. Meaning if you have the hub centrally located somewhere, you can go 1600 feet this way, this way, and the other way, allowing you to spread them out around your home. Currently I have mine by my hot water heater, by my washing machine, and under my kitchen sink. But because this is a smart system, that means that there is an accompanying app which will let you do some interesting things with notification sounds and the like. So let's take a look at the application for the Xsense smart water sensor. This is the application for the Xsense water sensor and base station. Here you can see everything is listed out that I have attached to the Xsense account. Right now I have it listed by devices, but I can select rooms and it will change the layout of this. There's also a room management option right down there, but we're gonna change that back to devices because that's the view that I prefer. And then if I come over to homes, if I have multiple homes, let's say I'm keeping these in a rental property, I could set up different homes so that I can keep track of the water sensors and where they are and if they're going off in a particular area. In the upper right hand corner, we have our emergency. So there is a service that you can get a protection plan. This is how you would access that. I am not currently utilizing that. The upper right hand corner next to that, there is a plus sign. This is how you can add more devices to your account. So right here, this is our device list. If I hit my toggle right there, I can have them more of a card view or this list view. I kind of like the list view. So that's what I'm going to leave it at. Right here, we have our base station. You could see it's got its label. It's letting you know that it's online and I can select share right there and then please enter a valid email address that you wish to share this with uh, and then an alias for that user and then what you'd like to share. In this case, it would have been the base station. But I'm going to select the sprocket icon which brings us into the actual options for the base station. That would be the same as if I just tapped on the base station image itself. You get a nice depiction of what it is right there. You have your naming convention, so I just called it base station. You can tell what room it's in. So right now I have it as part of my living room. I can move that to a different location if I wanted to. We also have our volume control for mid max because there is a speaker on the base station itself letting you know if there's a water alarm or an alarm elsewhere. Now we have our silent alarm on the back of the base station. There is a button. This option will allow you to use that button to turn off an alarm. So silence it right down here. We have our Wi-Fi network device information, which I'm not going to show you because a lot of sensitive information in there and then device sharing. So similar to how we did before, except right within the settings. And that's everything that you can do with the base station. Now coming into our actual water detection devices, we could see a blue progression that lets us know, Hey, this is its Wi-Fi connectivity as well as a battery icon next to it. There are three bars in that battery icon, letting you know how much battery is left per device. Again, if we tap on a singular device that will bring us in, or we could select the setting sprocket to the right to get us access. Again, a nice depiction of the device itself, as well as its network connection and battery percentage. We have our name right here. Tapping on that will allow you to edit the name if you want to. I'm going to cancel out of that. Again, room, where is this located? Again, if you're creating these room groups, you can do that right from here by selecting add another. Device information, again, sensitive information in there. It'll show you firmware, things like that, device MAC address. Here we have test device. Now, this is sitting slightly off camera. Bring this into focus and cover that up so it doesn't get too loud. But we're gonna test the device, cover up the sound, 
and give that a second to test. It, you see blinking, red light, and it made a noise, but I made it muted by covering that up. So we're gonna say, yep, that worked. And we're gonna go back. We're done. We know we, we are confirming that we're ending that test. Here we have device settings, volume control for the puck itself, min-max, and then what specific tone you'd like to have for the base station. So right now it's on tone one. I can change it to tone, tone three, tone two, tone one. And you could do that per puck. So in my case, if I have three pucks, I could change the sound so that each puck made a different noise. I'm just gonna leave it on that right now. So those were our sounds. We have help and feedback. So again, this is going to be built-in help for your devices. And then coming down here, we have our notifications. So will you get a push notification per alarm trigger, alarm end, device silenced, device test, and low battery? You are able to limit your notifications. I pick the ones that I prefer to see pop up. And then all the way down here at the bottom, we can select remove device and that will remove it from our actual lineup here. Now that's all under our home icon right there. If we come over to history, this will show you a history of what has happened. So right here you can see device test, device test, and it lets you know which one was tested. And then right here, water leak uh, was triggered. And we can come up to our calendar icon right there. And you'll notice if there's a red dot, that indicates when something happened. So in this case, tested, there was a leak. I silenced the device, no more leaks put it back in place and it triggered again, but then I turned it off and there were no, and there were no more leaks. I can filter, so I could say, what do I want to filter for? So which particular one? So here you can see the naming convention is probably a good idea to uh, kind of put where the device is located up front as opposed to what it is first. So food for thought, just let, kind of let you know what that looks like. And then within our account, we have our name up top here, which is going to be all your personal information. Not gonna show that. We've got our manage home, so here's the current home that I have, what we've got going on, and if I want to add another home, I can. Works with Alex A. Well, there are specific items that work with Alex A. Because the home base is accessible with other Xsense devices, the water sensors are not one of them. They list out right here the two that are currently accessible. And that is going to be the same with Google Assistant. You need to have these specific ones to work with Google Assistant. The water ones do not work. That's not bad, but just know. We have our alarm sound. So sound the alarm. Not only can your device puck itself and the base station sound an alarm, this will also have your phone make that noise as well. Protection plan, again, kind of saw that on the front page, but this is another place that you can access it for the free trial. Then we have our help and feedback, again, accessible from another place, but right here kind of brings up what it thinks you're looking for right away as opposed to that other screen. And then about Xsense, and it's just letting you know, hey, there's everything you need to know. And we're gonna come back to our home because that is everything for the Xsense water sensor as well as base station that you can do within the Xsense app. There you saw, it is a very minimalistic app, but I appreciate that I have all of that information in one place and that it can follow me wherever I go to be notified. So, hey, if there's water, I can let somebody know, you need to go check out my house because there's a problem. That's the beauty of something like this. The fact that it notifies you when you're not home. Having an alarm go off when you're not around is not gonna do you any good if you can't rectify the problem. Now, a water sensor is only good as its detection. So let's actually take a look at some tests for the smart water sensor here. I will say one of the tests that I did do but didn't have a camera in because I didn't want to destroy my equipment was I did have the water sensor in my bathroom while I took a extremely hot shower, several days in a row, steamy all over the place. That did not set this off, which is important. You don't want it to be set off with steam, even if it's condensating on the contacts there, you want it to only really be for actual water. So that is something that I tested and it did not go off, which is great. But let's actually take a look at how the top contact sensors work and what it's like underneath here. All right, so off camera, I've got a little water and I'm just going to kind of take my finger and dip it in here and get a couple drips going here. There's one right on the contact sensor, but it might not be enough, so we're gonna do it again. Now we've got 
two. There we go. That's this and the base station going off. Alarm off. And I also was getting push notification right there that the X sense was going off. And you can see just how little water actually set that off. You do notice that it does need to touch two of them to complete a connection, but it's also that easy to turn off, which is very nice. So there you go. That's, that's as little water as you would need to set that off for the top. All right, using that same bit of water, we're gonna dribble into this platter until it goes off. And there you can see. I'm doing a horrible job. There we go. Alarm off. And that's my phone going off again, so there we go. That little bit of water, dry that off really quick, and then show you just how little water actually got in there to set it off not including what I dribbled. But as you can see, it is very responsive and quick. The base station goes off, the hockey puck itself goes off, and you get a notification just like that. That's what you want in a leak sensor. One thing that I like with this being part of a system is you can expand your water sensor needs as needed. Xsense also does sell the sensors separately or the base station separately, but if you've already got a three pack like I did, you can just build out your sensors. Another thing that a lot of people might not think about is, hey, I don't necessarily like having a hub. Well, I used to be like that too. My problem, the more smart devices that I started getting in my house, the more I bogged down my Wi-Fi network. So if I've got six of these and they don't connect to a base station, but rather directly to my Wi-Fi, that's gonna bog down my Wi-Fi system. I've come to appreciate having a hub and the hub that comes with the water sensors here is also compatible with some of their smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. So you could have an, an X-Sense system built out using just one hub, which is really great. As you might suspect, the water sensors themselves are IP66 rated because they are going to get wet, as you saw. The volume can be all the way up to 110 decibels, but again, manipulated through the app, depending on your needs. And it's that versatility and connectivity that I really like about the, the X-Sense Smart Water Leak Sensor and Base Station combo. For the price and features, I think that this system is a very strong buy and I'm actually happy that X-Sense reached out to me to review this product because I was in the market for a new Smart Leak Sensor. So if you are also in the market for a leak sensing system, I highly recommend checking out the X-Sense Smart Water Leak Sensor 3-pack. Only have one here because the rest are in place already to help give you the peace of mind that you're not having leaks while you're not home. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.